Down through the centuries, the Catholic Church has been a visionary force in the provision and promotion of education. The Church's commitment to schools, universities and seminaries was based on two main assumptions. Firstly, its recognition of the fact that education provides a powerful means of developing people to grow in their knowledge of God, to acquire a Christian vision of the world, and highly value their religious faith. Secondly, the Church has always been aware that a sound education can promote good human development, enabling people to live satisfying lives while contributing to the betterment of society. It's no surprise then that Catholic schools and Catholic education have played an integral part in the development of the Catholic Church in Australia. Welcome to Looking Back in Gratitude. From the very first years of European settlement in Australia, both clergy and parents wanted Catholic schools for children. Several small Catholic schools were initiated. By 1863, there were 120 Catholic schools in New South Wales. Many were small, generally staffed by Irish Catholics, usually husband and wife teams with minimal education or teacher training. The provision of education was formalized into a dual system, stricter standards applied and many closed as they were unable to comply with the new requirements. In 1880, then Premier Sir Henry Parks introduced the Public Instruction Act by which public funding was withdrawn from church schools and directed to state schools only. Henceforth, all funded education would be free, compulsory and secular. The bishops and Catholic community took a brave stand at this time, vowing to continue to run Catholic schools without government financial assistance. Most teachers were eventually forced to seek alternative employment as they could no longer be paid. These were times of great faith and heroism by the clergy, parents, but most of all by the dedicated sisters and brothers who devoted themselves generously to maintain Catholic schools and verify their position as a value dimension of Australian society. The 1880s saw the emergence of religious congregations whose mission was to serve the church in ministries of education and healthcare. These newly formed congregations attracted great numbers of young men and women who generously committed themselves to active ministry. The foundation of two Australian congregations of religious women, the Sisters of St. Joseph and the Good Samaritan Sisters, ignited a flourishing era for the local church and a positive contribution to the ever-expanding Catholic school system. Between the late 1880s and the 1960s, the number of religious engaged in Catholic schools in New South Wales grew from 900 to 6,200. Catholic schools were staffed almost exclusively by religious sisters and brothers. Most came from Ireland and France initially, but with a flourishing Catholic community, increasing numbers of local sisters and brothers swelled the ranks of teaching congregations. Between 1950 and 1975, the student population more than doubled, placing enormous pressure on schools to cope, survive and adapt. Class sizes below 40 were the exception. Specialist facilities were rare, no paid middle management structures and school support staff consisted of volunteers. As well as being school leaders and teachers, religious staff also attended to administrative, cleaning and maintenance duties. Despite their heavy commitments and multiple roles, many upgraded their qualifications through part-time university studies and attendance at holiday time seminars. Throughout, a culture of minimal funding from government sources prevailed. During this era, principals were appointed by congregational leadership teams and few had officially appointed assistant principals. Catholic education offices were just beginning to emerge and provided limited support to schools, which, by and large, were mainly autonomous in their operation. The drain on the Catholic community to provide Catholic education to an exploding population in an unfunded environment seemed perilously close to collapse, and many dioceses considered closing their schools. Through their contributed services and their meagre financial remuneration, 
the religious of the day held the line, enabling the system to survive until justice prevailed. Finally, in 1963, then Prime Minister Bob Menzies introduced legislation whereby non-government schools would receive limited financial assistance towards the building of school science laboratories. By 1969, the New South Wales Coalition Party introduced per capita grants for students in Catholic schools. Later, the federal government introduced a modest per pupil grant scheme and government started channeling some taxpayers' money into the education of all Australian children. With the world in an era of change, religious were coping with internal anxiety and unrest. In the wake of the Vatican Council, and in a society bent on getting rid of perceived shackles, significant numbers were leaving religious life, and the flow of vocations had reduced significantly. Some of those who remained at the coalface and held the line were dispirited at the departure of colleagues and the collapse of many of the old certainties. By the mid-1970s, the proportion of lay teachers in Catholic schools had increased dramatically and the change of principalships from religious to lay had commenced, especially in primary schools. When vacations to religious life were booming, some of the religious congregations initiated teacher training colleges for their own brothers and sisters. In time, with the expansion of the Catholic school system, religious leaders had the foresight and courage to pool resources in amalgamations, which became a rich reservoir in the preparation of lay teachers for Catholic schools. These amalgamations developed into the Australian Catholic University, an institution which today owes its existence to the generosity of many religious congregations who made their property and facilities available, whilst supporting many religious in their pioneering roles on staff. This multi-campus university now prepares more teachers and school leaders than any other university in Australia, almost all of whom take up roles in Catholic schools. Some religious and Catholics of older generations may lament the fact that there is but a handful of religious now actively involved in Catholic schools. Leading and teaching in schools gave religious a corporate identity, a sense of friendship and belonging in school communities, as well as a respected profile in parishes and local society. It is not unreasonable that there is a sense of loss with the passing of that era. Catholic schools are now more popular than ever. At the beginning of this new century, there were approximately 1,700 Catholic schools in Australia offering Catholic education to over 600,000 students. The Catholic school remains a visible and positive face of the Catholic Church in communities across Australia. For many students, school is the only sustained experience of the Church they will have. Likewise, through ceremony and newsletters, most parents maintain an adequate level of contact with the role of the church in society. A majority of school leaders and teachers in our schools are Catholics committed to a Christian vision for education. Most are past students of Catholic schools for whom the story and legacy of Catholic education add meaning and purpose to their lives. Religious can look back with pride knowing they have done their work well planted the seeds that remain the essence of Catholic culture and take comfort in the knowledge that these seeds will be nurtured by the legion of women and men who are committed to carrying forward what is best in the story of our Catholic schools. Of the faith-filled and courageous men and women who founded the various congregations, each brought a special flavor to the common goal of caring for and educating the young. Moved by the Spirit, they read the signs of the times, identifying fundamental and unmet needs. They gathered around them followers who shared their passion and who were prepared to sacrifice all to elevate the human condition of young people in an integration of faith and life. Following the example and the inspiration of their founders, these pioneer women and men in turn attracted other followers. Of the 18 religious congregations that have been most prominently involved in Catholic education, 12 were founded in the 1800s. In the 19th century, the Catholic Church experienced a generous outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit through the founding of so many new congregations. 
The expressions of these charisms enriched the lives of many generations of young people and infused new energy into the church. What these founders commenced in faith and hope lives on to inspire and challenge school communities throughout Australia today as they seek to give fresh expression to the founding spirit. May those of us who now drink the water remember those who dug the well. The Catholic Education Office, Parramatta, is proud to pay tribute to all the religious who ministered in Catholic schools in this part of Sydney. Their role as the giants on whose shoulders present Catholic educators stand is gratefully acknowledged. The precious legacy they leave Catholic communities in these parts will always be respected and revered. In honouring them, the founders of their congregations will be given special honour in this diocese. The prominent display of images of the founders will attract grateful remembrance of these heroes for many years to come. St. Clare of Assisi, founder of the Poor Clare Sisters. St. Angela Merici, founder of the Ursuline Sisters. St. Ignatius Loyola, founder of Jesuits. Mary Ward, founder of Loretto Sisters. St. John Baptist de la Salle, founder of de la Salle Brothers. Nano Nagel, founder of Presentation Sisters. Blessed Edmund Rice, founder Christian Brothers. Bishop Daniel Delaney, founder of Brigidine Sisters. Founder of Patrician Brothers. Mother Mary Aikenhead, founder of Charity Sisters. Venerable Jean-Claude Collin and Jean-Marie Chavon, founders of Marist. Blessed Marceline Champagne, founder of Marist Brothers. Catherine McCauley, founder of Mercy Sisters. Archbishop John B. Polding, founder of Good Samaritan Sisters. Blessed Mary MacKillop, founder of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Blessed Francis C. Liska, founder of the Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth. Blessed Helen de Chapultin, founder of the Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. Patriarch Elias Hoyek, founder of Maronite Sisters. We salute these women and men who through their vision, courage and faith established religious congregations whose members have been such an influence for good throughout the world but especially here in Australia. We give thanks to God for the love made manifest to us in the mission and ministry of the religious women and men who carried the spirit of their founders in their hearts. A spirit that still animates many school communities. We gratefully accept the legacy they have left us and we commit ourselves to continuing their story.